Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part 4 of the General Electric 14 inch metal portable. Uh, because of supply chain issues, the caps that I wanted took quite a while to get here. But they are here now, and so we can proceed with the power supply. And then we're going to start uh, taking up the boards. And I'm pretty much just going to go from left to right. And uh, it's really not a fun process. I'm going to document pretty much everything and show you what to do and what not to do. Because if you don't do it that way, then the problem is, is you start breaking little wires and standoffs and things that are really fragile. Because as you can see in here, this is just jam-packed. Um, but first, let's get the, the two additional caps in there. And I'm going to worry about the dropping resistor thing after everything's fixed up and we can turn it on and run it with actual sweep and perhaps a CRT attached to it. And then we can work on fine-tuning the power supply voltages based on what the SAM says. But let's get to it. Okay, so the things that I was still remaining to get uh, was the 220 at 160 volts, which is this guy here. And then the big main filter, which is originally uh, 300 microfarads at 160 volts. But I got this 470 at 200 volts because why not? And it's a little closer to the size that'll actually fit inside of here. He says dropping things importantly on the floor. So we're gonna tighten this up a little bit. Just pinch it together some so that we can stick that in there and then wire it up to the old location, which should be, you know, good to go there. And as far as the 220 microfarad, I was going to pack that sucker over here. And... Try to get this bent up and over so that we have a good strong ground connection before I solder everything in because these aren't ready yet and I didn't solder them in yet. Wanted to make sure I had everything together that I wanted to. So now that we got a nice strong connection, I'm going to solder all these up and together. Just dump it in there. Just saturate it. Yeah. No, there we go. Not too much. That way we don't have a giant blob hanging down. Trim off all this excess. And make sure that our other leads actually took the solder by jiggling them and moving them around. Make sure they're not loose. And then we're going to take this. And run this up over here, like you see. And the heat shrink there is so that it doesn't interfere with any of the other values. And leave enough space that we can get the, the new guy in here. Maybe move that over just a pinch, like that. And I probably could have put another terminal strip down there and wedged the big guy in down there at the bottom, somewhere in this vicinity, like this but that's a really tight fit uh, and so it's actually easier to just clamp it inside of here and so we're just going to do a little bending motion here and I will be enforcing this with a little bit of epoxy after we get it in place and this black lead supposed to be a part of that um, negative terminal 
So I may have to extend that, which is not a problem. But let's get my wire strippers here and bash the camera so that everyone gets motion sickness. Strip that off. And let's see. My little fine pliers are available. Yes, they are. And if you're wondering, yeah, I was sick. I had something hit me pretty hard. It took me out for a while. So I'm behind on everything again. I'm kind of overloaded with work and everybody's getting kind of irritated at me because I've had to close my wait list and people on the wait list may not be gotten to and I can't really do anything much more about that it's just things came up in life and illness and whatever else that just slowed me down and it throws off all those timelines so if I can't get to you I'm sorry but life gets in the way sometimes all right and let's clean this up so that I can extend this guy. There we go. Let me go grab some hookup wire. And we're just going to use this fat roll at 22 gauge this has got silicon actually no this has teflon coated wire teflon's good because you can use the exterior insulation for wire coverings and things let me tune it up make it ready problem with silicone is the critters like it. I had more problems with rodents eating silicon based wire than, or silicone based wire, excuse me. Alright. We'll bring that out. And give us a little bit of extra service slack here. Again, giving everybody motion sickness. Sorry about that. But camera's literally two inches in front of where I'm working so that everyone can see what's going on here. Let me grab a piece of shrink tubing real quick and then we can shore this up. Let me slide that on. And we're just going to use the soldering iron to shrink it down. Try not to move it around too much. Sometimes you could use a, one of those Ama flames too, but this will work for now. Just heat it up. And we'll strip the butt end of it. And attach it to our capacitor and we'll put a little bit of glue inside of the bracket to hold it in place and then we'll squeeze our capacitor in, and then we'll be done with the power supply section all right so that's in there Okay, let me grab some glue real quick. And essentially what I'm going to do is, is line the inside of uh, the bracket with a high strength hexane based rubberized adhesive that I use for speaker stuff. I sure do like it. It's the Springfield Speaker Pro-Grade Adhesive. 
and it really does a marvelous job of holding things in place regardless of what the contacting surface is that's why i really like it and it doesn't take long to cure either so i'm just coating the inside of this thing because on top of the clamping pressure which will eventually subside as the uh, uh, bracket fatigues I have the glue to keep it in place and that already bites down pretty pretty firmly but there it is it's nice and stuck in there so we've got all the values of our caps in uh, the main filter uh, second tetrary and quad so power supply is done uh, so what we're going to do now is start with the secondary and third boards and you're going to see what fun it is to take these up and how little you have to actually work with it's really just kind of an awful thing all right so the first thing we're going to do is take up all of the quarter inch nuts holding the boards down now in restoring one of these sets the one thing you can never do is be a lazy fuck pardon my french uh, if you are a lazy person and you just clip the capacitors at the leads and you replace the capacitors and call it done <laughs> it ain't done It'll be coming back to you real soon, and I'm going to show you why. Everybody wants to take shortcuts because it looks really hard, and it is hard. Servicing one of these is not a straightforward thing. It takes a lot of patience and a lot of time, which is why I hate doing them. I have so much work that the last thing I want to do is dump five to seven hours into one of these things, when I could be using that time to fix other stuff. But I also don't want repeat visits. You can't just wham bam thank you man these out the door. But the first thing you have to do is to get the board up. You're also going to have to remove the tubes. And I'm like, there's a step here I'm missing. Yeah, remove the tubes. you got to remove the tubes. If you don't do that, you're going to have a bad time. <clears throat> ah, that's just going to have to go flying. All right. Remove the tubes. Take your last hex screw out. And then hopefully the board will just fold back. And I won't have any problems with wire snapping or anything like that. This is also the time you should be looking for wire constraints. Anything holding it together, wire wraps, ties, anything of that nature. And then we're going to very carefully fold this board back and look to see what else is holding it in. And I think this this gray lead here is the only one currently constraining us, which is number, uh, looks like 22J. So I'm going to take a set of pliers and very carefully unwrap 22J. And when we rewrap it, we are going to solder it. Almost there. Alright, so if we take loose 22J, which is the gray wire, now we've got pretty much all, all the leeway I need. So let me show you why you take these up. And taking a look at these boards, number one, first and foremost, that tube socket there isn't even soldered to that pad it's resting on that pad literally resting uh, there's a couple more there's one over here bad solder it's not even attached to the board it's just sitting there 
quality control on these are garbage. Uh, the soldering is breaking down on a number of these connections. You have to resolder these. Here's another one up here. Just not even attached. I can move it with my finger. It's just terrible. Uh, these were the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, yeah, despite what people tell me, every single one of these metal portable GEs I've taken apart, this, the board work is just garbage. So we're going to have to resolder all of these sockets after we're done replacing the caps and make sure that all the resistor values are within spec. Uh, and yeah, yeah, so that's why you always take the board up. If you just approach it blindly from one side, replacing capacitors, it will always have issues. It will always twitch or flicker or do something that you don't, excuse me, you don't like. So you have to address that. The terrible soldering and assembly of these boards. So now I'm going to make a map of all the capacitors on this board. Uh, and then we can pull the parts, uh, start taking the caps out. And then we'll uh, replace the caps and check some resistor values. But yeah, I mean, whew, camera almost went flying. But that's that's what you're expecting to see on one of these chassis, which is why it's kind of a miracle they all work in it at all. Um, but yeah, let's let me give me a few moments to make a dump a diagram, and then we'll go from there. All right, so I've drawn up my little map thing here. Most of the values I've changed just by looking, but the ones that I haven't, we're going to have to mark as we pull them. But that will at least give us an idea, in case I forget how many there are or where they are. And so, what I'm going to do is fold this back down, and we're going to start taking caps loose. There's only one value I might not have, which is a 0.015 at... Uh, 1,000 volts, but I'm sure I can figure something out. Alright, just got to make sure I'm desoldering the right ones. And you're going to want at least a 50 watt iron to uh, deal with these parts because... The foil traces on this are abnormally large. But that's leaky boy. And let's see here. And then there's another one. There's another .015, but it's at 630 volts. I know I have those. Feel free to fast forward through the boring parts like this, but everybody likes to see me do this for some reason. So be it. I find this kind of work terribly boring. Yeah, these are all oozing wax <clears throat> now we're going to come to the first value that I was not able to get by looking at it unsolder it and see what it is and then make sure to write it down before I forget these are all built during the space age where you know we got to go to the moon using space age copper circuits i think that was what rca's claim was space age copper circuits or some such nonsense it was a way to make it cheaper problem of it is is that tubes and pcbs don't mix they just don't and you are what you're a 0.047 at 200 volts. I can deal with that. Let's make a quick note here. 0 0.047, 250 volts. All right. 
And then we have the next one here. That's one of the other ones that I couldn't read. And then there's a third one after that, which is another sprig. All these paper and wax cap things gotta go. I was amazed that it was making a picture based on that crummy old amount of parts inside. Let's see, this should be that capacitor. Although my spatial perception is kind of crummy today, we'll find out. Was I right or was I wrong? Right about that one. Uh, I don't think I was right about that one. Maybe it's the one next to it. Yep, it's the one next to it. All right, and that's a double watt four seven. That's six hundred volts. Okay, and then let's do the final one we couldn't read over in this corner here. This is way in the over on this side. And let's see how much I can get this wrong today. Yeah, this is one of those instances where the foil trace is so fat that it absorbs most of the heat. Let's see, did I get that one right? Yep, got that one right. Not the one above it, though. Let's see if it's this guy here. <laughs> These hemostats are about dead. They don't grip anything anymore. Let's do another set here. Nope. Wrong again. Okay. It's the one just above it. And, of course, I dropped that on the floor. Let me pick that up here. And... He's pretty baked. Hard to read what that says there. Looks like a point one though. Point one to two hundred. Let me just write that down. And then the rest of them will just yank out. Well, assuming I can get the positioning of them correct. See, I make my own diagrams because sometimes you don't always have the SAMs. I mean, you should probably get it if you're going to do some hardcore troubleshooting. But otherwise, most people don't want to spring the 20-something dollars there is. Let's see here. Yep, 0.015 at a kilovolt. Not sure if I have that. And then we got this big fat electrolytic here. <clears throat> that's probably the uh, cathode bypass on the audio output tube I'd be willing to bet and where else does that terminate right above that socket there Okay. 
get this one right. Yep, there's that side. Let's go over here. Someone put way too much solder on this pad. Way too much. Now let's see if I can yank this one out. No? Nobody? Ah, there we go. Okay. And here are the double lot four seven. And then the last cap is our electrolytic. Now, given my lack of available memory on my computer right now and on my phone, I'm probably going to have to limit these videos to no more than an hour. But people's short attention span usually has them skipping through things anyways. <clears throat> Yeah, let's see here. No, didn't get that one right. Probably the one right next to it again. Like I said, spatial perception is garbage today. There we go. Michael Mold Radio Company. Mmm. Okay. So we got our capacitors depopulated. You know, like how they kind of annotate them on the board here. Like, they almost look like they're handwritten. So, that's kind of cool. Uh, now let's go over the board and see if we have any uh, way out of tolerance resistors. I'm sure I'm going to find a couple, if not more than that. And we're just going to start going through them here. 100K, that's pretty close. 68, that reads 58 in circuit, not going to worry about that. Should be 15, 13 in circuit, not going to worry about that. For him to read a little lower is okay. There should be 180, 202. Yeah, that's about within the 10 to 12 percent. I'm not gonna leave that. It's not drifted that bad. 100K, 89 in the circuit. 56 or 560, 535 in circuit. And let's see here. And another. Let's see. What are you? You uh, one meg? Looks like, yeah, 960-something in circuit. And then, let's see, it should be an 82, 77 out of 82. So far, no bad resistors. 47, yeah, that's spot on. This one in here looks like a, where are you? Brown, brown, orange, so that would be, what, 11? Yep, <clears throat> 11, 6. It's only a tiny little bit up. Not going to matter. Hard to tell what you are. I can't see what you are. Yellow, brown, or no, is that yellow, orange? You're a 1K. Or maybe that's wrong. Can't tell what you are. Oh no, that's a gold stripe. So white, brown, orange. Yeah, white, brown, orange. Or is that red? I don't know. We'll have to look into that one. 
Uh, da, 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 da. That should be like 910. Yeah. White, brown, brown. That's 910. So it's, you know, 90 ohms off from being inspect. That's that's within 10%. Uh, let's see here. Brown, red, green. So that should be 1.2 megs. That measures way low in circuit. And let's see, purple, green, orange. So that should be uh, 75. Yeah, 75K is measuring 60 in circuit. And that should be 270, measuring way low in circuit. And let's see, 75, 66 in circuit. And then this should be 180. Measuring 170 in circuit. It should be like 470, 476. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, 820. Measuring 815. Should be a 10K here. Measuring 9.5. We're almost done. 47. Measuring 39. 44. And here's what? 6.8 megs. Is it even going to register that? Yeah, 6.6 .6 megs. We're okay there. Another 47. 33, 3.3 .3 meg. Yeah, 3.4. Okay. And then uh, 100K, 95. So, thankfully, all the resistors are in spec here. So, I don't need to change any of them out. There's our little famous horizontal phase detector dial. That's going to have to go away. But uh, we've at least checked this over. Now I'm going to go ahead and repopulate the board with uh, new caps, and then we'll solder it up. And then <clears throat> that's all the time I'm going to have today for this section of the machine. And then next video we'll work on the remaining section here which is a little bit more simplified and then we can work on dialing in the power supply and uh, getting it working right. And I just noticed something that I need to make a correction on and this guy up here that I thought was a 0 .0022 is actually a 0 .022. Uh, this is a common mistake that people make, myself included, and I double checked all the parts that I pulled just to make certain. And had I changed this to a lower value, this circuit would not work very well. Um, and I think that's part of our vertical output circuit. So that would be definitely some nonlinearity type stuff going on there. So, but the point is, is that I caught it and I didn't have to create a wild goose chase that was uh, of my own doing. All right, so the first one we're going to do is this 0.015. And I just got my new Panasonic film with the leads bent over like this. Now you can go crazy. And you can put heat shrink over the leads and stuff like that. But if it's not going to be adjacent to anything that's going to cause a problem like a short circuit, I just leave them be. So there he is tucked in there nice and pretty. I'm going to put a check mark next to that one since I know I've done it. Now as far as the 0 0.015 at, six, uh, at a kilovolt, which I don't have. What I do have are two 0.033s at 630, which I'll put in series. And that will give us the 0.015, it's actually 0.016, but you get the idea. And that'll be at 1.2 kV, so I just have two of them here. And I'm going to solder them up and make some extension leads real quick here. So now I got this fantastic piece of getified magic here. And I'm just going to measure up the length. Should be about right. Just about right. 
Oh yeah, that's going to fit in there nicely. And move this out the way. Bend the leads over from the back. Oh yeah. Doing good there. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me take that one off the list. And now we have this .022, which I almost mistakenly identified. Make sure the correct part goes in there. Again, we're just going to bend the leads over to about the approximate length of the old ones. All the purists will say that I should be taking apart the old wax capacitors and stuffing something new inside of them to keep this looking original. Even though you can't even see this section of the board when it's installed in the machine. Makes perfect sense. Alright, next one. This little .047 here. Uh, let's see. Come on, I know you're in here. There we go. Big box of capacitors. And they're all categorized, but sometimes they just don't always show up. Until I shuffle through them a couple times. All right. Let's put that lead in there. Put that one in there. And the lead's over. Now, I haven't soldered any of these in, but I'm just checking them off as I install them. That's just a personal thing I do. I like to be thorough, so... Let's see. Next one's double op four seven. Let's get this out of the way. Stop killing my batteries. Uh, double op four seven is gonna go over here. This guy here. And of course, there's something interfering with me getting it in here. Not sure what I'm bumping into. Maybe an old chunk that never came out when I removed the capacitor. Uh, let's get a good look in here. I think that's going to be it. Huh. There's always got to be one that fights you. That's going to be the one right there. See if we can just push that on through. Nope. This one's going to fight me. <coughs> okay. Let's try this again now that we've removed a little bit more. And then I have to reinstall that green wire that just came out. Which should go right next to it. Just like that. And because of how easy it is to pull that out, 
I'm going to go ahead and solder that right now. So it's less likely it's going to come out. All right, let's put a check mark on that one. And there's another double lot four seven. Make sure that that's correct. And that's going to go over here, I believe. Sometimes it is really difficult working these things in here. Bear with me. Go ahead and bend these over. All right, now we're starting to move along here. And then we have a point one. Which is going to be the one at the edge here. Starting to get low on space on the camera, so gotta finish this up soon. Okay, that takes care of all except the electrolytic, which is that five microfarad. Let me see what extension I have to make for that. Uh, let's see if I can get in here with just a minor leg extension. Looks like I can. I had to extend the lead about maybe, oh, I don't know, a quarter of an inch. But that's going to fit in there okay. Let's bend the leads over. And then we're good. So that's everything populated. I have to replace the diode still. Uh, and then <clears throat> next video we'll solder all this up, reassemble it, and disassemble this board and do the same thing. Uh, but yeah, next video, solder the boards up, replace the uh, AFC diode, install this and pull the other one out. And then once we get the boards repopulated, and we are to a point where we can turn it on and test it, then we can figure out uh, what else needs to be done of anything. Because it did work previously. We still have to check all the tubes and stuff like that too, make sure those are happy. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this segment of the 14-inch GE Portable. Uh, more stuff to come.